Right, hi, and welcome to tonight's episode. It's a little late. I just finished my review of my week, and there's some strain showing. There's no doubt that the intensity of things here in Australia right now is making life pretty challenging. It's starting to show up in some areas of my life that I was like, oh, wow, look at that. I had a whole day without tracking. I normally track across the core four, the body being balance and business areas. And Wednesday, there was a big fat zero. I actually can't remember the last time that I got a zero, maybe some months, maybe even a year or two ago. It's been a while. Normally, I'm pretty diligent, but it really shows the strain that this country is under. And I was fortunate enough to go for a beautiful walk this morning with my wife and some friends on the beach where as we rolled up they were there and we walked together tomorrow outdoor masks come in here and the question got asked hey well how much protection are they going to offer i'm like you know what probably not that much like your chances of catching covid at least where i live in byron bay pretty small since there's none here but even if there was here then potentially walking on the beach is a fairly low risk experience yeah, perhaps if you're elderly or you're obese or you have multiple medical conditions. But then again, whatever you've been up to to create that probably wasn't walking on the beach every day. So yeah, we'll see how it plays out. The strain, though, is palpable. It's uh, affecting me. It's affecting virtually everyone that I know. And it's uh, it's tense. It's very tense. What is interesting about this mask outdoors thing is that the New South Wales government doesn't really seem to be able to work out why lockdown's not working. And so they're like, okay, let's just go stricter. Let's go more. Let's go masks outdoors. But the problem is that if they aren't approaching the problem systematically, then just doing more of what's not working probably won't get you something that does work. Like locking down... We, we, we've seen it increase from 300 to 400 to 500 to 600 to 800 cases. It's like, wow, it keeps going up. And I looked yesterday at the numbers and they said uh, they tracked about 100 and uh, 697 were mysterious. Now, that is most of the cases. And I brought up this before, but... What's interesting is that the testing sites never end up on the places where COVID has been. Like literally there's one place where I can guarantee in Sydney, if you're getting 800 positive cases, that all of those testing centers that have shown up positive COVID have had COVID in them. And yet they continue not to realize that this might be the source of the infections. Like you might actually have to stop testing or if you don't want to do that, that's cool. But you've got to look at some way that you could do testing without infecting uninfected people. It's an interesting concept, but perhaps if you want to keep up the testing thing, then use Amazon to ship them do-at-home tests. Now, it may not be perfect. Not many people are delighted to shove a thing up their nose and they might need the nurse. So it might not be possible, but if it's not, then perhaps it's time to can the testing. This is go, all right, just stay at home. Maybe... The problem is the testing, but if that's not considered, like, like I don't, I don't get why it wouldn't be considered. I was talking to a friend and they described the testing protocols and what they said was there was 50 seats all socially distanced, all very nicely socially distanced, but how they ran the testing was that every time someone got taken in for the test, everyone would get up and move one seat. And then the next person, everyone would get up and move one seat. And this essentially guarantees that everyone would have sat in every seat. And so if anyone had COVID, then the risk of infection goes up substantially. And, and this is a real example of system design, just like, dude, what were you thinking? Like, yes, presumably the goal is to get everyone tested in order. But you've got to remember you're dealing with this infectious disease. Like having everybody go through every chair probably wasn't the best choice. It might be a little slower, but potentially you could say, hey, when you sit down, look at your number. And when we call your number, come in. So they would call one and seat one gets up and walks in and then call two and seat two calls them. 
walks in and seat three walks in and then the next people coming in they sit in seat one and it loops around up to 50 and around you go at least this would have prevented everybody sitting in everyone else's chairs like did they do this on purpose or probably not they're probably not doing it on purpose hopefully not that they just didn't put any effort into thinking about what's the purpose of the system. The system is to get everyone tested, but it's also to prevent further infections. Like, what's the point of testing everyone if the testing procedure gets more people infected? This doesn't make any sense. You have to be aware of the complete system, not just one part of it. If all you're thinking is, right, we're going to get the people through as efficiently as possible, so we're just going to move them through and get them to move, 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 move. That's the best way to get through. You're forgetting the other parts of the system. Even having everyone go into the same test room probably wasn't thought of. It's like, okay, well, maybe we need five test rooms and number one goes to room one and number two goes to room two and we'll move through and potentially change PPE so you're not infecting everybody as you go in. Like the doctors and nurses probably have COVID on their PPE, on the outside of their PPE. So fine, they're protected. That's great. But the people coming through from the testing aren't protected. Like they should be wearing PPE too, perhaps. It's going to cost a fortune to do this. And perhaps you start to wonder about, well, are we even considering the cost of all of this? So that's where I'm finishing up for tonight. Consideration around the system itself and how it's designed. And as a little bonus, how much is it going to cost? Because you could probably design an amazing system, but you've also got to look at the price. If it costs more than the business can afford, then, hey, it's not the right system for you. All right, that's all I got for you tonight. Hope you're having a great day or great night. Remember to meditate. Remember to exercise. Remember to occasionally even smile. All right. Thanks for joining me today or tonight. Um, look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue this journey into the power of systems to create results. See you then.